example this report does is suggest that there's a feeding frenzy in Washington uh, aided by uh, promiscuous Snowden disclosures by the media turning, if you will, against this administration, which heretofore has been a media darling, and, and uh, quite frankly, extreme opinions on both the left and the right. So the, the, te the marching orders for this uh, commission, uh, this board, has been, let's come up with a bunch of changes. It's really not a serious discussion at look at what is uh, necessary for national security, and also whether or not there are any abuses. What's remarkable about this, unlike all the other episodes involving intelligence reforms in this country and others, there's been zero abuses. Nobody has done anything wrong. Nobody has demonstrated that this level of collection with metadata or foreign intelligence is unnecessary, far from it. So sure, but this is a very unfortunate exercise. Yeah, this is a bipartisan inquiry which has come well, up with conclusions about the need for change. But what I'm trying to say is I, I wouldn't get too hung up on the question of who is bipartisan. Richard Clark, for example, which used to work for both administrations, is, is a technocrat. It's not a question of partisanship. Let's stipulate that the pressure for changes is bipartisan. You have extreme right in the Republican Party, particularly the Tea Party, and extreme left in the Democrat Party, but are clamoring for it. Just because both sides are clamoring for it does not make it right. My point is there's absolutely no seriously well-conceived explanation of why the change is necessary, either from a standpoint of the operational needs of the intelligence community in the age of global terror, or from a standpoint of abuses. Weren't what abuses have been demonstrated? Weren't you surprised by the scale of it? By the recommendations, not no, at all. No, I, I'm so sorry. I was unclear. I apologize. Weren't you uh, surprised by the scale of surveillance that was disclosed in these reports and leaks? No, quite frankly, the, the biggest problem with the disclosures is the level of sensationalism it brings. Most people in the know understood that metadata collection, which your correspondent explained what it entails, has to be comprehensive. Think about it. it makes, if you're looking for a needle in a haystack, what darn sense does it make to have a half of a, of a stack or one-third of a stack? So you need to collect all of the metadata, and then you need to drill down on it. And you only do it in a very limited fashion. I want to make sure you, your viewers understand that. You're only looking for information on which phone numbers were called or received calls from a magic list of phone numbers associated with foreign terrorist entities. That's the only thing that's done as far as data analysis. So you start with a tremendous data set, okay? And then you drill it down to maybe a list of a, a few hundreds or a couple of thousand. But any mathematician, any serious scientist will tell you there's no other way to do that. It's been a huge victory. It's, it's, it's the whole week has been an amazing victory. First, a federal court and this wasn't a liberal judge, it was appointed by George W. Bush, a conservative judge, said that this program violates core privacy rights and also said that there's zero evidence the NSA can present that these programs are even helpful in stopping terrorist plots. And then today, a bipartisan panel appointed by President Obama that includes the deputy director of the CIA, longtime Washington National Security Advisors, said the same thing, that this program poses a threat to liberty and that it is not necessary to stopping even a single terrorist plot. It's a complete vindication of everything Mr. Snowden said early on and that we've been reporting for the last six months. If it's acted upon, will it meet your concerns? Well, there's still a lot of details to be worked out, but if it's acted upon in full, it will be a very significant step to re restoring individual privacy and some meaningful controls on the NSA, which are currently lacking, absolutely. At that point, your campaign ends, does it? No, there, remember, there's still a lot of other abuses that the NSA is engaged in when it comes to spying on foreign nationals, when we're talking about not metadata, but the content of their emails, of their telephone calls, of their browsing histories, of their online chats. There are important regulatory constraints that need to be imposed on the NSA to make sure they're abiding by these limitations. The NSA is an out-of-control rogue agency that in all sorts of ways is abusing its power. This is one important step to curbing the domestic portion of those abuses. Uses. This is a mechanism for bringing the NSA under the control of the White House and other regulatory authorities. What is wrong with that? 
Well, the NSA is already under the control of the White House because it's part of the, the, the Defense Department, which reports to the president as commander in chief. Um, so I'm not really sure what you're asking. It does, well, it's already part of the executive branch under the authority of the White House. Well, for example, on the question of the surveillance of foreign leaders, a particularly contentious issue, the proposal here is that such authorization has to come directly and explicitly, and in a particular case, from the White House. Right. Well, first of all, I think most insiders, and there's been lots of people who have gone to reporters and have said this, um, the White House was already aware of the targeting of these leaders, although they deny it. But secondly, the mere fact that the president approves of it doesn't make it right. The president approves of all sorts of things, from imprisoning people at Guantanamo with no charges to the current NSA program that I think lots of people with consensus are now realizing are quite wrong. But again, I agree that more constraints are better and it's heading in the right direction clearly as a result of what Mr. Snowden what what he did